when you had that third failure in a row, did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. Elon Musk, love him or hate him, he is the true innovator of today's era. He's done a lot of notable things and one of them is a hair transplant. If you follow his journey, he's made an insane comeback from the point where he started. And in this video, we're gonna go over exactly where he started, what treatments he could have possibly done at what period, and basically go over his entire hair journey on how he reversed his hair loss. But before we do that, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Vera Clinic. Vera Clinic is where I got my hair transplant done from. Um, if you're looking for a quality, trusted professionals who can get you long lasting and natural looking results for a fraction of a price. Look no further than Vera Clinic. They got me these amazing results for my own hair transplant and I would highly recommend them to anybody looking to get their own transplant done, especially overseas. If you want to check out my series of my hair transplants that where I filmed the whole surgery and everything as well as my month by month recovery, I'll leave a link to that whole playlist in the description below as well as the contact information for Vera Clinic so you can contact them for your own hair transplant needs. That being said, let's jump right into the video. To understand Elon's hair loss, it's important to take a look at his earlier years on where he started on his baseline. This is a photo of him with his brother in his teenage years. Compared to his brother, he does seem to have a lot more fine hair, uh, which can be a prediction. And usually having fine hair, especially if it's just genetics, it can be an early indicator of future hair loss. Not always the case, but most of the time that can be seen as a good indicator to know if you're going to be going bald or not. Uh, this is a famous Elon photo of him working at PayPal in the late 90s and right here he's actually in his late 20s. He is at least a Norwood 5 going to a Norwood 6 but as we can see he's lost his hairline and has some diffuse thinning going on in his early years. I'm sure working and building PayPal was a lot of stress which could have contributed to him losing his hair a lot faster than he should have considering the lack of sleep and all the hurdles you go through when you're building such a big business it can definitely take a toll on your body and if you already have a genetic predisposition to hair loss it can add fuel to the fire in terms of accelerating it. So these two photos over here are five years apart of the one on the left is in 2002 and the one on the right is in 2007. In 2007 he made a quite a comeback which I would say is his first hair transplant and at this point to maintain it he's probably on minoxidil and finasteride and from keeping up with those treatments from 2007 onwards his hair loss definitely stabilized quite a bit. This photo over here is him with his brother in 2015. At this point due to his treatments he looks a lot better than his brother. As we can see his brother's hair is not as how it was back when they were both teenagers uh, because obviously as you age and genetics and if you have some sort of hair loss going on in your family it's going to affect you but what I think had happened is he probably saw Elon and his hair thinning and he's probably experienced some of the same symptoms but I'm suspecting that he caught on early and probably started some sort of hair loss regimen treatment whether that's most likely finasteride or minoxidil and he didn't have to go through the hair transplant procedure himself because he learned from his brother uh, that's what I'm suspecting but I could be completely off because two people, although they might be from the same family, they may see a completely different future for their own hair, uh, depending on which genetics you got. I personally was blessed, I, was just, I wouldn't say blessed, but cursed with the worst genetics where I had personally had a hair loss, but whereas my brother, he's perfectly fine. He has an amazing set of hair, thick, full, and I don't think he's gonna be going bald anytime soon. Just because it runs in your family doesn't mean it can always catch up to you, but you always wanna be cautious uh, if you have a balding history going on in your family so you can be aware if you start seeing initial signs you can you know take action right away to combat it without having to get a transplant ideally this is probably one of Elon's recent photos you can see the FUT scar uh, in the back of his head which is pretty prominent even though considering his hair length in the back is quite thick and quite long uh, but the fact that you can, can still see it is pretty crazy FUT was a very popular method back especially in the 2000s and that was the go-to method whereas now we have FUE both have their own pros and cons but but I feel like FUT feels a lot more invasive because they're literally cutting a piece of your scalp uh, skin out and then they're extracting the hair follicles from there and then placing them on the area that you need hair and the area that they uh, end up taking out of, they actually staple them together. So it feels pretty painful. I'm sure under anesthesia, you don't feel much, but uh, you know, FUT is still, in my opinion, feels like a much less invasive procedure. And especially when it comes to showing uh, visible signs of hair loss, you don't see that big scar. Instead, it's like these tiny dots. I'm not sure if you can see it on the back of my uh, scalp right here, 
but you see like these tiny dots but if i grew up my hair a little bit more especially i'm sure i have them some up here but because my hair is still uh you know relatively long over here it's pretty much invisible if you're just looking at it from a visibility or aesthetic standpoint uh if you have the option between fut and fue i would still go for the fue because it just looks more discreet and you can't tell especially if you grow your donor area out a little bit longer than where i have it this right here is current elon the elon that we know now uh, he's come a long way from his paypal days funny thing is he looks younger now than he did when he was in his late 20s one thing to note is compared to his hair back in 2015 to how it is now it gained a lot more density and this is most likely due to the fact that he got a second transplant just to fill that density in and ideally that's how you want to do it you don't want to kind of go in all at once especially in, in a case where you want to have the most natural look because most of the time if you do such a big procedure it reduces the graft survival rate and can take a long time for your donor area to heal so he did it the perfect way possible slowly over time and this was what got him the result that he has today i'm sure he didn't go to turkey he got it done over here from the looks of it it looks like he may have gotten anywhere in between five to fifty five hundred grafts done uh considering that he caught it relatively early and i don't think he needed too much density i would even suspect maybe seventy five hundred grafts if we're really pushing it and that's probably because he got it done here in one of the best facilities in the world and with a hair transplant like this with that kind of look i would say it ran him anywhere in between forty to fifty thousand dollars uh could be more could be slightly less but uh it can definitely cost you a fortune but if you're elon that's 30 pennies to you so it doesn't really make a big difference considering the results that he got what's actually inspiring one thing i'm low-key a little nervous about uh, because i've been taking finasteride for the past like you know almost it's like six seven years is my fertility right like when i want to have kids uh, will i be able to or you know i'm sure i can always get that test done but i don't want to face the truth to be completely honest with you but what's inspiring for me to see is that considering that elon has been on finasteride for the past like almost over 15 years 15 20 years he still managed to pop out 11 children so that's pretty amazing news uh, obviously everyone is different but uh you know long term down the line when it comes to your own uh you know fertility and your ability to reproduce all those things are things you want to consider uh, i might probably get that test done sometime down the line but for now as i said i've been on this stuff for the past seven years i haven't had any side effects um so i've been pretty good with it but this was a quick overview again very inspiring testimonials to see that hey even though you get a hair transplant if you just keep up with those protocols those baseline things you can keep your hair for many many decades even after the transplant and elon is the perfect example of that and uh, i'm glad we have people who've done it before us so we can see and you know kind of gauge an expectation uh for ourselves uh without just having to go into a blind or be worried about you know having multiple transplants down the line so this was a comprehensive overview of elon musk's uh hair journey and his hair endeavors with his transplants i hope you guys enjoyed it and found it valuable and let me know what you guys thought about the video in the comment section below but until next time i'll see you guys in the next video peace